Holy moly! <laughs> Whoa! There is no bigger thrill for a huge nerd than to see this thing sitting on your doorstep. Now there's 10 books in here. The significance of these 10 books are, as some of you know, I've been learning to clean and press comic books. Well, this is the first submission I've made to test my metal or whatever. Now these aren't really any big books, but there are some keys in here. And I meticulously went over these, at least I thought I did, right? So we're gonna learn some stuff from this box. One, how am I at grading? I was pretty close on my first submission ever, but I was a little bit off. Second, how is my pressing and cleaning? Has there been any reversion? If the grades come in way low, I'll know something. I'll be able to look the books over and say, hey, this reverted, I need to do something different, right? So yeah, let's get this thing open and see what we got. So the first book is Star Wars Tales of the Jedi number one. Now this book was free. I got this in a package with another book that I had purchased from a guy on eBay and he just threw this in. I was actually, a, <laughs> this book was not on my radar, but I looked it up and this has a little bit of value to it and the thing looked pretty pristine before I even pressed it. But I went ahead and pressed it and I thought it started at pretty close to a 9.8. So I'm hoping we got a 9.8, right? So let's take a look. 9.8. That is really cool. And I haven't checked this in a while. It's been a couple months or whatever. So it was a $150 book back then at 9.8. So I'm not sure what it's worth now. But very, very happy to have it in the collection. It'll go up there next to my other Star Wars books. And by the way, I submitted these books in late June and here it is early August so I was extremely happy about that so the second book I have is a spawn number eight I just love this cover right it's the homage cover and you know it's classic McFarland stuff here I have a couple copies of this so I thought they were, I got three copies actually for ten bucks each and I thought they looked pretty good um, three of them I thought I got to nine point I'm sorry two of them I thought I got to nine point eight one of them is borderline 9.6 to 9.8. Well, I've since learned after the submission that you should not submit more than one copy of the same book unless you expect them all to be the same grade. So I'm just hoping that that one 9.6-ish book doesn't hold the other two back. We'll see if we pay for it. And uh, so let's take a look here. 9.8. Well, that's a good start. Now, if we only get one 9.8 out of the three, I'm actually going to be really happy with that. Um, not sure what this book's going for now. I'll, I'll once again, I'll look that up. But I just love the cover. I've been wanting a 9.8 of this. Now I've got at least one, right? All right, the next one is another spawn number eight. And uh, I'm not going to be able to differentiate between these three books, probably. I might be able to look at my notes and see which flaw, which one had the 9.6 flaw on it. I thought there was one flaw on a front cover, like a rub or something, that would hold it back from possibly getting 9.8, but the book was perfect otherwise, except for this one little flaw. So let's take a look. Okay, a second 9.8. So at least so far, my eye's pretty good at spotting a 9.8, and this one does have a big tick right in the middle right here that I was unable to press out. So it's a good sign that, you know, you can have that one tick. It's not color breaking, but I just couldn't I've gotten better since this, and I probably could get it out now, but, you know, it's got a, I don't know if I can show it on the, it's probably not going to show very well. It's like right here. But the book looks great otherwise. It looks perfect otherwise. I can't see anything. There's a couple, there's some bindery dings on the top and bottom, but that one thing is the only thing I see on the book, so yeah, it deserves the 9.8. So last one, spawn number eight. And uh, those are the two 9.8s. Maybe this is the 9.6. But like I said, it was borderline, and I am very strict in my grading. If I say it's a 9.6, it's probably a good chance of 9.8. If I say it's a 9.4, it's probably a good chance of a 9.6. I'm very, very hard on myself when it comes to grading because I don't want surprises. I don't want to. I would rather grade something 9.2 and get a 9.4 and be happy 
that say, oh, I hope this is a 9.6, and then I'm devastated when a 9.2 comes back, right? I follow the grading guidelines that I've kind of gleaned over time from reading and watching and looking at books and what CGC is actually doing, that I've got a decent feel for it now. And in fact, I included this in my free grading tool that anybody can, it's not, I'm not selling it. You can just go to the spreadsheet. I'll link to it in the description. And it bases your grading on visual appeal versus counting, you know, defects. You still count defects in the high grades, but mainly it's about uh, this looks good on the cover, this looks good on the spine, and you rate each area of the book, and it gives you a ballpark idea of the grading. Now, it's still in the early stages. I haven't got a bunch of books back from CGC yet to calibrate it, but so far, feedback has been pretty good. And if, if you're looking online at books, this could be a great way to get you in. Is this somewhere between a 5 and a 6.0, or is this somewhere between a 2 and a 3.0, or is this something between an 8.0 and 8.5? It can kind of get you close from what I, because what I did is I hid a bunch of the grades on online books. I went through and used my tool on them, and then I revealed to myself what the grades were, and I was within a half point or sometimes a full grade away, you know, across a wide spectrum of books from the lowest of low grade all the way to the highest of high grade. So check that out. So yeah, the last spawn number eight we've got right here is, drum roll. <laughs> Let's see if we can get another 9.8. Wow, one of these was supposed to be a 9.6. I had noted outside chance of 9.8. So yeah, I'm just thrilled. Got that same, I think I bought these all from the same place and they had kind of the same bend, tick, whatever. This one has that color rub on it. It's kind of a little color break rub right there. It has that and that, and that's pretty much it on this book. Everything else is just absolutely perfect. So two defects, you are allowed to have a 9.8, but I thought this, because this was technically like a color break almost, they would, they might hold me back. But So that, that tells me something, and now when I'm looking at books going forward, I'll be like, okay, I see that, but now I know a 9.8 is possible if I get that, and that's good information, right? Oh, so there we go. We're, I don't want to jinx myself, but we're 4 for 4 on 9.8s. Now, not all of these books I didn't expect to be 9.8s. We've got some lower grade books, not low grade books, but like lower high grade books. And uh, so the last one here for the spawns is a spawn number one. Um, I got this for 20 bucks. It was a decent deal, I thought. It was an ultra high grade. And uh, not ultra, ultra high grade, but high grade. You know, I thought it was a 9.2 when I got it. And I thought I got it to a 9.8. I was pretty confident. There was like pretty much nothing on the book once I had finished pressing it, right? It didn't really need to be cleaned. So I, you know, maybe use a tack iron in a couple spots. If I remember correctly, there was a divot somewhere in it that made it like something had been dropped on it or weight had been pressed into it. So I'm, it could have reverted. So I'll be curious to see. So I thought it was a 9.2, hoping for a 9.8. But if it doesn't come in a 9.8, I kind of know something might have reverted on it because it was pretty much flawless otherwise. So we'll take a look. 9.8. <laughs> so apparently, the pressing on this book worked to go from a 9.2 to a 9.8. I'm, I'm, I'm just, and I've gotten better at these. I'm, I'm. It's hard on the black because if you if you use a tack iron too much, you can rub color, or I'm sorry, gloss off the book. So you got to be very gentle. It's, it's usually better almost to leave the the non-color breaking tick on and try and get it off. But I've got other methods now, like cardstock I can put under there. Kind of fatten it up on the spine so it gets a better press and uh you know i've, I've improved my pressing since this was basically just my first i mean i had probably pressed 10 or 15 books before these just test books before i went on to something decently nice and once i found i wasn't damaging books anymore and they were you know i was getting pretty good at my process which i use captain mike's i'll put a link to the description i've got his books so follow him to the t pretty much and you can't go wrong but yeah another 9.8 very, very, very cool. Um, exceeded expectations. No matter what happens in the rest of the box, I've already exceeded my expectations. I knew this was going to be a learning experience. I was hoping it'd be a positive learning experience, but yeah, obviously you always want to exceed expectations or do something like that. But, you know, I've kind of learned that you're going to set yourself up for disappointment if you do that. So one of my favorite covers of all time, I've got two copies of this. One is a direct and one is a newsstand. And uh, once again, 
you're not supposed to submit two books that are different grades. So when I got this one in, and both books I paid about 25 bucks for, I probably overpaid a little bit on the direct one, but it was ultra high grade looking online when I bought it, I think eBay. And the newsstand was a great deal at 25, I thought, high grade. So on the direct, it started about a 9.0, 8.5, 9.0, and I thought I got it potentially to a 9.4, but somewhere between 9.2, 9.4 is what I'm expecting here. So let's see what we got. 9.6. I'm actually, that's above what I expect. I mean, I had no, I, 9.4 was my cap on that book. So to be a, a bump above that, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Now looking at it in the slab, I don't see any color bricks or anything on it. Okay, around the, there's some stress around this bottom spine right here. And, you know, it actually has some little dings along the top here. Now, whether they just considered some of that bindery, I'm not sure. Maybe that's a common flaw. I know sometimes these 328s can have a little uh, bindery tear, little slit right here in the bottom. Let's see. White pages, too. This one had a little bit of slight tanning along the top and side. I thought this might get off white to white pages. Um, it is very, very subtle, but you can see that tanning there. Right, or, or I don't think it's foxing, it's like a tanning. So I'm, I'm actually thrilled, <laughs> very thrilled with this 9.6, which I did not expect. And uh, the other one is the newsstand, the coveted newsstand. This I would love to one day have in a newsstand, 9.8. And in fact, after I get directs of everything that I think I can get 9.8 in, my next goal is to try to upgrade them to either Canadians, if it's possible, or newsstands. I have newsstand on a few things, you know, like my pride and joy is kind of this one. Now I have a signed copy 9.8 Direct, but it, this book I infinitely like better just because it's so, so rare and hard to get a 9.8 in this book, Newsstand. But anyways, this video isn't about that book, it's about this one. So here we go. Um, I thought I had a chance of getting a 9.6 in this book. Um, I thought 9.4 to 9.6, but once again, but once again I thought it started at 9.0. And uh, so I pressed it. I had to do some cleaning on this one, and it, it was pretty rough. I had to, it was beat up pretty good for a high grade book. It had some bends, corners weren't perfect, some pitting in it. In fact, it could have been an 8.5. Maybe somebody could argue for an 8.0. But yeah, I remember this book. I did a lot of work on this book. So let's see what we got. Okay, 9.6. And uh, that's exactly the top end of what I thought I could get. And uh, I'm actually super thrilled to have a 9.6 newsstand of this book. Not selling this anytime soon. I think this is a good long-term investment. This last McFarlane on Amazing Spider-Man with this awesome art. I mean, if you're a Hulk fan or a Spidey fan, that is just some of McFarlane's best work in my opinion. Yeah, to have a 9.6 newsstand, I'm, I'm really thrilled. I mean, obviously 9.8 would be amazing, but that's hard to do. I don't know how many are in the census newsstands of 9.6 or better, but I'll check that. So yeah. Okay, once again, top of my expectations. Okay, here's a book that's kind of lost some steam, I think, from when I bought it, because I bought it probably six to eight months ago. So I probably didn't get a great deal on this. I think I paid a hundred bucks for this low high grade uh, copy. Newsstand though. So yeah. Um, but I don't have this book slab. So no matter what it is, I will take this book slab. So I thought it was like an 8.0 or 8.5 when I got it. It had, definitely has some issues, but I thought I was potentially going to get it up to a 9.0. But yeah, anywhere 8.5 to 9.0, I'd be thrilled in this book. And uh, based on what I was looking at beforehand, it definitely has some problems. And I won't, don't wanna to look too close right now because I don't wanna reveal the grade. So here we go. Let's see what we got. That is it. All right. Oh my God. I mean, this feels like that moment in my last unboxing when I got the 9.4 on the, on the Hulk 340, which is over here just off camera. This is a 9.0 cap. What the? There must be some flaws on this book that are just standard flaws. How did I get a 9.8? I don't even know what this is worth and I wouldn't even look that up. Guys, I, I don't, I don't, I'm looking at it though and this, this book looks good in a slab. 
And actually, you have to have magnification to see a lot of the defects on this book. I mean, I probably wouldn't have been like amazed if it was a 9.2 or 4. But man, I must be way too strict on my grading. And I thought CGC had tightened up. Maybe I got a, just a lucky grade? I don't know. But I'm looking at this in not the greatest lighting. And uh, this book looks pretty good. Maybe I need to review what I did on this book and why I thought it was a 9.0. What, what is the major flaw? Is there a tear somewhere? And if there is a tear, is it common in the book? You know, there's this little tear here. And I didn't count against because I've seen that on other books. So I didn't rate it that for that reason. Let me check my notes and maybe I'll add it here to the video and figure out why the heck I thought this was a 9.0. When the guy sold it to me, he had it listed as a 9.0 or 9.2 and when I got it, it surely was not. I mean, I could stare at this thing all day long and, oh, I think I figured it out. Okay, there is a, cr a little crease right here, right in that corner. I thought it was a crease. I thought that was a crease. Like the corner's been slightly bended or very similar to my X-Men 101. I have a little, this little crease right here on the corner, I thought it held it back and capped it at 9.2. So that's what I thought is I thought this book was capped because of that at 9.2. But I thought 9.0 because of the spine ticks color breaking. So this is a gorgeous book though. It, I, Obviously, it took me a while to even see that, so maybe that's a common thing. I don't know. I'll have to look at that. But yeah, this is like the big win right here. Holy cow. Whew, heart's beating on that one. I, I can't believe that just happened. <laughs> really? It's like freaking I, I don't even know. I mean, I don't even feel like I could continue here. Star Wars 81. Beautiful cover. Now, I already have a 9.8 of this on the wall. I got, I, I just, I found it for sale, half fair market value, so I went ahead and I just had to jump on it. So yeah, I'm probably selling this one. So I got it for like 40 bucks raw. And I was a little bit disappointed when it came in. It was definitely a little rougher than I anticipated. So I thought it was a 7.0 or 7.5 when I got it. And uh, I thought I was able to get it up to about an 8.0. But it's, I can look, I'm looking at it here, it is, it presents like awesome. It's like the best presenting 8.0 you could ever expect looking at it. So let's see what we got. I don't know what's going on here. Am I, did I submit the wrong books or something? I, how is this a 9.6? Look at this top corner right here. That is dinged good. I don't know, man. I'm extremely happy about it. You know, I'm looking it over and that's pretty much the only big flaw in the book. Um, there's a couple non-color breaking spine The book's pretty perfect other than that. I remember that. But I thought this would cap me at 8.0. A big ding like that. So maybe a big ding and nothing else on the book takes you to 9.6. Once again, I just learned something. I had no idea about that. I thought a moderate ding like this like capped you so you guys let me know in the comments, what do you think about this? Do I deserve this grade for that? I don't know. Maybe my grading standards are just way too crazy strict. I don't know. So let's see the last book here. Now this one is a uh, one that I've been wanting to get in high grade. And it's kind of rare. It's hard to find this book. So this is the first full cover by Todd McFarlane. I think Coyote 11 was the first interior art. 13, I think, was his first cover art. We had just a little section. I think this is the first full cover by Todd McFarlane, which makes it significant. And anybody that's a McFarlane fan wants this book. And, you know, there's not that many in the census. It was very, very difficult for me to get an ultra high grade copy of this. I got this for 50 bucks, which I thought was a great price, considering I thought maybe it could get a 9.6 or 8. <sighs> But there's a sad story. It came damaged in shipping. It creased it. I mean, it creased the spine a little bit and caused a tick that I could tell it was a good bend. And I could tell that color break would not have been there before the shipping damage. So it was my first experience with shipping damage. I've had a lot of that recently. But yeah, I was extremely disappointed. But he gave me back 
half my money. So I think, actually, I only paid about 25 for this. So great deal. I'd pay that all day long for this book now. So I thought because of that, I could only get it as much as a 9.4 with an outside chance of 9.6. I thought it ruined my chance of 9.8. In fact, with this damage here, I thought maybe if I didn't press it, it would have gotten like a 7.0, 7.5. That's how bad it was. It was just beyond, it was just insane. So let's do it. Last book. Let's see what we got. Holy moly. <laughs> Whoa. Jeez, man. <laughs> oh, this book will be in my will, as you know. Holy. You know, I, I can't even see. Okay, right there and there. Right there, there, and there. That's what was left. These two things right here. And that was the only damage on the book, but I thought they were color breaking. I didn't think you could have two color breaks on a spine and get a 9.8, but... You know, if I hold this thing up, I have to know where that damage is to see it. It doesn't, like, jump out at me. So that one right there, I thought would hold me back, for sure. That's the major part of it. But that, other than that, this book has flawless corners. I mean, I, you could never find a better copy of this before that shipping damage on this book. And I thought there was no way, no realm of possibility this thing would get a 9.8. I was, I was like, I'm just going to get a 9.42 and be happy with it, right? So this submission, either I'm the best presser in the world, which I know is not the case, or I'm way too tight in my requirements for grades. My grading must be way too tight, which I guess is good, you know. And you know that original submission, that uh, childhood submission, I had used a app to grade the books. And I, it was a little bit off. It thought the books would be higher than they actually were. Now, it's only a 10 book sample. Maybe I got a favorable grader. So I'll have to get some more books back before I'll know for sure. But that is a positive sign. I gotta go celebrate this. I can't believe this just happened. I'll do a little valuation of what my return would be on these books based on what I paid. And I'll show it here at the end in the spreadsheet, you know, after this is done for you geeks like me that like to look at the numbers, hang around. But if you just wanted to see the unboxing, I hope you enjoyed it. Please like the video. And if you like this content, subscribe. You know, if you don't, if this is just like a one-off for you and you're not big into this, that's fine. Don't subscribe. I want active subscribers only. And uh, I really, really appreciate you guys supporting me. So yeah, hang around for that. Once again, thanks for watching and happy collecting. All right, so here we go. You can see my spreadsheet here. If you look across top row here, we've got obviously the title, the issue, um, the grade I thought it was when I first got it, the possible grade, the actual grade, how much I paid for it, the cost, what my total amount is into the book as of this moment. That's the outlay. Uh, the pre-press value and what I thought the actual value would be and now this is based on several months ago So obviously this has probably dropped so I was expecting to you know have a total gross value of 1503 so I have a total of 583 into the books so you can see between these two I, I got a pretty good deal on these books. I, I Try pretty hard not to overpay for books um, So yeah, this is my pressing cost shipping cost, all that stuff anyways when you take all that away, what is my projected profit? So what we're trying to figure out here is based on the grades we actually got, which was right here, what are the values now? And what was our actual net value or net profit would be right now? And that's this bottom line right here. So let's just go through each book. I've got everything ready here. Um, as you, if you look at the bottom left of your screen. So spawn number eight, we got three 9.8s. Now this book, has dropped a little bit in value, but let's just see what GP analysis is saying the fair market value is over the last, what, let's do last, I guess 90 days, there's a lot of sales. So it's a $75 book now. It was a $90 book and a 9.8 before I sent them in, but that's okay. I'm not, the market is what the market is, right? I'm still coming up with a profit of 33 on each of those books, which is, I'm learning here, this is just a test group of books. This is not like a, a huge mega profit making venture for me. If it happens, great. If not, I've just learned something. If, it, if I lost a little money, I would be perfectly fine with that as well. But 
you know, based on what has happened today, that obviously is not the case, right? So, okay, so we got 75. So now spawn number one, and we had a 9.8 on that as well. And that puts us, and that's a direct addition. It puts us at a 90 day average of 182. That book's dropped a little bit too, but still, you know, 182 would be what I would list it for approximately today. And that would put us about $130 profit on this book. So yeah, very happy about that, right? Um, Star Wars Tales of the Jedi, we paid $0 for that. And this book, has a current value of 143 over the last nine days. Uh, only 14 sales. It's probably more like I probably could sell it for 150. Last sale was only 77 though, so you know let's drop it. So we'll just go with a 143. Once again, I paid nothing for this book, so 111 profit, you know, for what I have in, and that was like, I think I bought a hundred dollar book, and he gave me a hundred dollars free basically. That's just crazy. I mean, 143 dollars free. You know, 111 net. So uh, 328s. Let's take a look at what those are. We got 9.6 on both those books, and a 9.6 direct is $75. So put that under the direct one here. Only an $18 profit, but hey, that's <laughs> that's 18. That's not zero. I was expecting minus four, so we'll take that. And then newsstand. Now there aren't that many newsstands in a 9.6. There's only been two sales, seven sales in the last, five sales in the last 12 months. Last couple, based on the last couple sales though, we'll just go with it. It's about 158. I wouldn't sell it for 158. I would hold this book. I would sell it for maybe for 250. But yeah, that's what the market is right now. So we'll just put 158. We did very well on this book, over $100 net value or profit on this book if we were to sell it. Uh, minus, of course, any fees. I think I actually figure the fees in here, though, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I figure the fee. I figure a 10% sale fee. So this, the the sales fees is baked in. If I were to sell these on Shortboxed, which I'll put the link in the description, I have books for sale on Shortboxed, and some of these will probably be added. So yeah, Star Wars 81 is the next one, and we got that in a nine. Point six. That was our third 9.6. We only had three 9.6s out of 10. We were expecting not that many 9.8s if you look here. One, two, three, four, five. We had the potential for five 9.8s and we ended up with seven. But some of these were like huge jumps though, so that's just crazy. Um, yeah, so where were we at? Star Wars 81. And we got a 9.6 in that, which is, we thought 8.0 would be the most. So yeah, what is a 9.6 on this book? Oh, uh, let's see here, 142, but that's only over five sales. I'm kind of dubious on whether that book would be dropping this much. I actually think, let's look at the last few sales. I don't think this is a $100 book. I don't know how somebody got it for $100, but you know, I would pay that all day long. I'd buy 100 copies for that. So the last three were 199, 159, and 100. Sales can range anywhere up to 250 or 300 lately. Um, I, I really think that those are just good deals people got in auctions. I, I don't think this book is... So I'm, I'm just going to say this is a... Let's just err on the side of caution though and say this is a $175 book. Even though I think this is a $225 book. I think I could get that for it. But I'm going to put 175 just because five sales. It's like... With this low ball added in, it's kind of skewing it, I think. But, you know, long term, this book looks pretty good. This is a $300 book and uh, at 9.6 um, in 2021, which, of course, we know is crazy. It was a crazy year. But regardless, it doesn't matter. Even if it's a $130 book, we're doing okay. So $100 profit on that one potential. So here's the two big ones. All-Star Squadron, number 47, which in my wildest dreams, I did not think would I would get a 9.8 on. We got it. And uh, so the last sale was $6.95 and only one sale on this book. Let's see what the census looks like on this. I'm curious. How many 9.8s are there? There is only 38 9.8s on this book. Actually, okay, there's 46 total 9.8s, but eight of those are signature series. So 
The first Todd McFarlane full cover only has 38 9.8s. That's, that's pretty cool to have one of those. And uh, like I said, this one will not be sold by me on inter, inter, any, under any circumstances. <laughs> if it was ever worth 5,000, I might sell it then. Um, so yeah, let's go back to where we were and take a look again here. So really, really rare book in a 9.8. And uh, so there's only been five sales in the last 12 months. And there were only five sales in 2021 and only two sales in 2020. Wow. So this book you can see is generally gaining a lot, gaining a lot of steam. And I think it's going to land somewhere north, well north, north of 1,000 at 9.8 eventually. So we'll take that. So 975, 685, I think I would be a seller. If I were in the market, I would sell this book. Probably for 850, I think would be a fair price. Um, seven, 12 month average though is 751, so we're just going to go with that. And uh, you can see I got a really good deal on this book. That's 600. These are the kind of books you dream about. You get a, a raw copy for cheap, and then you turn it into a $750 book with a clean and a press, right? So yeah, that that one kind of made that submission. So the one that has lost a lot of value recently, but it's still a highly sought after book is this Amazing Spider-Man 361. Let's see what a 9.8 newsstand is selling for. 7.18 is the average over the last 90 days, so the book has come down quite a bit. With a high sale in 2022 of $1,200. So based on the last few sales, yeah, I mean, 718 is probably about right. This is probably a $750 book. But once again, it's a lot more rare than having a direct. So it's a $500 book direct now. It, used to, it was a $1,000 book not too long ago. So yeah, I'm going to hold this book. It's going to be on the wall. It's a new stand. I don't have any other reason to find this book anymore. I've got the copy I will have. And uh, so let's just say 718. So... You know, when the market comes back up, you know, it's unfortunate that I didn't get this back, you know, six months ago. I and mean, this probably number would have been something like 2500 plus. But yeah, still, look, $2,000 petition net profit. And this was just like a test submission for me. I did not think, you know, I was going to be happy with the 700 projected profit. But man, I far went above and beyond that. So I'm very, very happy that my books didn't have any reversion. Captain Mike, man, shout out. Awesome, thank you very much. I'm a newbie to this and you just allowed me to do this. I owe you one, man, seriously. But yeah, I have a similar copy of this spreadsheet that I gave away. Um, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, it's like a, a value analysis tool. It's very, very similar to what you're looking at. So I'll make sure I link to that as well. And also my grading tool, that'll be in the description as well. So I hope this video has been as enjoyable for you as it was for me. Man, this is a blast. I feel like a kid in a candy store every single time that box like butterflies, heart races. How big of a nerd am I, right? But man, this stuff just gets my blood pumping. I love comic books. I love making them better than they were before now that I'm cleaning and pressing. I love evaluating them, grading them. There's just so much to do and so much love in this hobby and uh, just so much fun. So thanks for watching and happy collecting.